Hey everyone, KIC here. It's been a while since I've played. I've actually been a little busy last week or two, but I've been meaning to do a pro overkill version of this mission because, well, it's just a fun one to play solo. I actually was playing this earlier and botched it fairly hilariously, so this is kind of my redo on that one because I think I got about three minutes in before I messed up. Actually, it might have been closer to 4 or 5. I'm pretty sure I was on the last two guards. I don't even remember what happened other than uh, one of them came into the room when I was trying to shoot another one. I couldn't dominate the second one in time, and that was it. So, what can you do? Anyway, uh, we got some guards here, some cameras around. I like to start quickly and just take this guy out. Half the time there's a camera there or a guard uh, in this uh, room. Yeah, you know what? Uh, wrong number. Whatever. Uh, Roll the wrong dice. Number. Uh, no, I get it. It's fine. One of the bonuses, since I have taken a bit of a break in recording videos, is that Overkill Studios, the guys that make this game, released a new update. They released the Infamy update. I'm sure you've heard about that by now, read about it, whatever. I'm not really going to go into those details because, well, I haven't even hit level 100 yet. That's, you know, I'm not here to show you everything I could possibly can in the game, and I'm not really interested in grinding out those levels right now. I just enjoy playing, so... Anyway, that stuff aside, one of the things they introduced with that update is actually a series of bugs that affects guards on some maps, this being one of them. Now, I haven't actually seen the day one bugs myself. I've read that there's some day one issues where guards will stand in place or otherwise, basically, they end up getting their pathing all screwed up. At this point, I haven't noticed anything. They seem to be pretty much okay. Possibly they're moving around more than I remember, but, you know... It's really hard to say. I, I tend to think it's not really an issue at this point. Then again, we shall see as the map moves on a little bit. I don't know if you noticed, but I actually took the locomotive as my secondary. The reason I did that has to do with At all. my story from earlier, just a couple minutes ago, where I was telling you how I screwed up on the last time I tried this mission. The silenced weapons, basically putting silencers on there kills your threat, so you have zero threat. Well, it's not a huge, huge deal because I have, um, what is that one called? Uh, Dominator, I think, is the skill. I have that aced. So not only can I get the guards to cuff themselves, the acing bonus gives you, uh, or the, the acing, the skill gives you a bonus to range and effectiveness of your yells. So theoretically, you don't need a gun with high threat, but it would have helped last time to have one when I was telling the guard to get down and he ignored me. Alright, so just a little over, or a little under four minutes in, that's guard number three, so there's two more left on the map. Under different circumstances, I might just kind of blaze through here, but there's two reasons I'm not going to right now. One, this is a pro mission, and I'm tired of screwing up on them because I'm getting too uh, creative or too impatient. And two, the aforementioned possible issues with guard pathing bugs. So I don't want to jump too crazy into things here only to find out that there's some sort of bug or change into the guards' behaviors that ends up, you know, leaving me hanging. Okay, there's a guard on the side over here. That's going to make things a little easier because he's going to walk into the main lobby area and chances are the other guard, wherever he may be at this point, isn't going to see this one go down. Now, if this guy hadn't come out, I might have considered taking a camera out, but that's what actually got me into trouble last time. 
the uh, one of the guards wandered by, and the second one came to inspect the camera because I had shot it, and that's kind of when it's all fine. things went bad. All right, so this is the last one that can be killed. So no real reason to completely hide his body, but I'm going to go ahead and put him on the side over here just in case the guard comes from the left-hand side because I'm going to check on the right. If he comes from the left-hand side, he won't see that, and if he's over here, well, then it won't be a big deal to take him out. And there he is. All right, so just going to drop a jammer, and then it's time to get him to submit. And this is where I should switch to my locomotive, but what can you do? Alright, so that's the last guard. At this point, all that remains is taking out cameras. I don't know if you've ever tried, but if you leave cameras up, you might think, okay, whatever, big deal, I can run past them. Throwing a painting and a camera seeing a painting lying on the ground, yeah, that's basically instant cop trigger, so... It's really worth your time to shoot the cameras, just to be sure. Okay, we're going to grab the one looking into the lobby, and then that's just going to leave the other side of the building here for the cameras. And there should be one in this room, and I think this is the laser room. Yes, it is, so... Rather than go through all of the rigmarole of moving paintings around, since I'm sure you guys have seen that before. Just gonna whip right through it here. If only you could do this in the game, because... You know, as much as I love this game, and I really do enjoy it, you get kinda tired of this part of the game after you've done it so many times. And for those who are going for those high infamy levels, man, that's gotta be painful going through this... I don't even know how many times it takes. I mean, it's, you know, if you're actually playing these kind of missions and not just doing rats runs, of course. With these paintings in place in the senator's apartment, we'll have plenty of coverage, like a Trojan horse. Alright, so that's seven paintings. It's going to be a pretty decent payout at the end. Not the best it could be, because that would be nine paintings, but it'll still be pretty good. And just because I'm going to go ahead and go back to the Bernetti, that's my usual stealth secondary of choice. Um, that goes back to the problem of if you have a guard who won't submit and you just want to shoot him to do a little damage, you got to be careful of your primary doing too much damage if that's silenced. And if you're using a bigger secondary like a, the Deagle, you're going to instantly take the guy out if it's a guard, at which point, you know, you just kind of messed up your chance to do your mission stealthy. And since this is really just a lot more bag shuffling, I don't think there's really any reason not to just rip right through this. So again, fast forward is my friend. You figure including the uh, title sequences at the beginning and end, the kind of little extra stuff there, I've actually cut about 16 minutes off of this entire mission just by doing the fast forwarding. The unfortunate thing with fast forwarding through a lot of this stuff is you can't see how badly I bungle throwing a bunch of the bags. It was really quite pathetic. I kept throwing them into things, hitting walls, hitting invisible barriers that would knock them awry. You name it, I was screwing it up on pretty much every part of this mission. And yet, go figure, still managed to get through it. Okay, so day three. I mentioned on the title sequence, if you notice, that day three has some guard bugs. Talking about that earlier with day one and how there's potential guard bugs, but we didn't see any. Day three, I've played through it a few times now, definitely has bugs. In a way, it makes it more interesting, but in a way, it also takes some of the challenge away, depending on how the guys decide to just mill around. And so far, they've milled around in the exact same way for me. Okay, still taking my usual approach, which is pretty, pretty slow initially. I like to hit the cameras, 
take a quick look around, figure out where everyone is. Like this guy right here is walking outside of the room that hanging out in. And just get a feel for where everyone's at. Okay, this guy, I thought he was going to come in. He's actually going to go to the side. There's a camera right there because it came down from the stairs over there. So at this point, just trying to get a feel for how the pathing is working. A lot of times you'll get someone running upstairs. I haven't noticed that yet in the camera. And then you still get a couple guys wandering around. It seems to take a while before the guards break. Um, but if you notice that guy that was right there, him, keep an eye on him because he's one of the ones that'll that'll break or has broken on me consistently. Now I admit, it could just be dumb luck that I've had uh, the same couple of guards or uh, guards in the same positions kind of freeze on me, but hey, you know, it's worth mentioning. I haven't looked to see if Overkill has acknowledged the bugs with the guards, but I wouldn't be surprised if they know about it. I mean, enough people have been complaining about it on the Steam forums, on Reddit, on I'm sure other places too, so eh, you know, they're not exactly in the dark about all this stuff. Alright, as, again as I was saying, uh, I tend to take things a little little on the safe side on this map, especially just because of the guard issue, but it won't take long before you get rid of a guy or two and then it's just kind of time to start ripping through everything here. Okay, do you see the flashlight? See the guy in the corner there? He's basically in the same spot still. And we got the guy in the bedroom. I think I've had him mess up on me too. You can see there's three of them downstairs right now. The f furthest two are in the same room. That second one that was on the right-hand side, I've had him mess up too. So again, I don't know if it's a consistent thing or not, but here's our first candidate to be shot. And awesome, there's another guy over here. And luckily, as I mentioned, I have Dominator Ace. So even though I was across the glass from him, that was enough to prevent him from shooting and basically salvage this mission since it was really close to going loud, at which point me running around solo, in a suit, on overkill, it's not going to happen. Okay, I'm still playing it safe at this point, because that was the first guy killed, so that was pager number one. And we know there were three guys downstairs at some point. I saw one in the corner there, so I'm going to go ahead and take care of this one. Uh, just because I like having a domination to go with a kill. It's kind of a pain when you drop the ECM jammer, when you have, uh, I forget which, what the actual name of the skill is. But I have the one that, when aced, lets you block pager calls. It's really inconvenient when you drop one of those jammers down and you kill two guards because there's really not enough time to hit two pagers at once. You might be able to do it if the guards are close enough together. Um, I'm honestly not sure if you have enough time to do that, but I'd rather not risk that and instead kill one and dominate the other. And this is just kind of my thought here too. I've heard of people having bodies found up here. So I like to put it behind that staircase. I really don't know if that's the right place to put them, but I haven't had anyone find it yet. But I've also, I think, well, maybe I have had a guard find them, find a body on the rooftop once. I don't, I don't remember. It's been a while since it seems like that happened. Okay, so we're just going to drop this guy off and then run back in, check the cameras, see if we can figure out what's going on, and chances are if my past experience since the latest update holds up, it won't take long to get rid of these last guys because they're just going to be standing around. But you never know, so again, playing it a little safe. So there's the guy still in the bedroom. 
can't see the guy on the right side down there. There's the guy on the left. Looking, I can't see the one on the right. He might be blocked by a column. But chances are he's down there. So let's just go ahead and find out. At this point, I'm kind of done with taking my time on everything. Okay, just going to see if I can see the guy who I think is over here. I can't see him from this side. So let's go ahead and move over to the other side. Pretty sure that one guy's still in the corner. It looked like he was there. Guy in the room hasn't moved. Now I'm just kind of moving around slowly because of cameras. So if you're wondering why I'm kind of still taking my time, that's why. Okay, there's the other guy. See, he's not moving. He's done down there. And there's a camera. But that camera's not going to matter. So all three of those guys are stuck. There's no real need to be super slow and detailed about anything. This is just force of habit. Because there still could be cameras around. So let's take this guy out. This is pager number three. Uh, I know... No, uh, nothing at all happening over here. Okay, since the other guys aren't moving, no reason to deal with that guy's corpse. It's basically pop a jammer down, and we're going to go ahead and take these guys down. I'm going to go ahead and dominate him, but that's bad when there's a red exclamation point this far away. All sorts of crazy firing, that guy's down. Uh, oftentimes there's cameras in this room, usually not in a spot to see him, but I just needed to make sure because I kind of panicked and ran over to this guy instead. So we'll give the jammer another second or two and this pager should trigger. This is the last one. He's also the last guard if you don't uh, count the one who was just is standing around dominated at this point. Now, I don't think it really matters, but just for the sake of being safe, I'm going to go ahead and move his body and just throw it inside here. Okay, so it's time to grab all the items. Pretty sure I remember seeing one or two earlier. That's the first hard drive. There's still That's another one. Hard Good. You're on track. Keep going. Just checking all of the usual spots. Okay, not too many of them downstairs at this point, but I remember seeing the laptop over by the bedroom. Oftentimes there's stuff on the counter here in the kitchen. I don't see anything on those, so let's grab the laptop. Didn't check the bedroom earlier. I probably should have. That's the second hard drive, so that's going to leave the phone and the tablet. You know, I didn't check to see if they ended up fixing the text that says you need to find a USB key, but I'm willing to guess they didn't. Since I didn't check any of the bookshelves earlier, I'm going to go ahead and check this one and hope that my luck is good and the vault is here, and it's not. Well, still, it's not really a big deal, but it is convenient if the vault is right there because that's the fastest extraction. That's the tablet PC. Perfect. Okay, that just leaves the phone. One more. Keep looking. And that's it. That's his phone. Good. So it's back upstairs we go. I'm going to go out this way. Go ahead and take care of that last camera. Great. Now get and the I suppose I could shoot the lock or go through the window, but I'll be civilized for the moment and just pick the lock. Public office. Wow. We are in the wrong line of work, gentlemen. Now I know you can do this faster. I've done this mission faster, but I'm really not in it for speed runs. Especially when there's pathing bugs, and I'm not entirely sure how they're working. Although knowing now, uh, having a little bit more confirmation that they seem to work up the same way, I bet you could go through this mission even faster than before, because you know those three guards are just going to be sitting there. Open the vault, or at least um, turn on the camera to it, so it's time to find where the vault is. With my luck, it's going to be in here. And what do you know? 
Okay, now yes, technically that is better than being in the other location downstairs, but the reason I say that with my luck it's going to be in the bedroom is because if you were paying attention, I completely bypassed all of the assets and did not take the bag shortcut. And since we are at the point in the game where it is nothing but bag shuffling and bag throwing and bag handling and everything in the world to do with bags, I figure you guys know what goes on here, so no sense beating around the bush. Let's just rip right through it. Of course, because I'm also running this at super fast forward, you're missing me screw up with moving bags around again, but you're really not missing much. In my defense, I will say I did not screw up on any of the double gold bagging. You can run in there, bag some gold up, throw it out, bag more gold up, and walk that one out without any problem. Half the time I screw that up and I have an extra trip because I only got one bag of gold on one of the attempts. This time I actually got all of them, so I saved myself a good 20 seconds there, which I easily lost by screwing up and throwing bags and missing things and forgetting them and all that sort of fun stuff. Getting really close and the next set we'll start counting them. So here we go. Last two bags. Throw that one in. This one was right on the edge. Oop, I lied. Last three bags. That is the last one. And just making sure those are body bags. And let's go ahead and get out of here. I think Wolf is a little bit happy. So that's all three days right there. Didn't have any real problems except with the little bit of wonkiness of the guards on day three, but as it turns out, it actually made it a little easier. I mean, yes, there is that rough moment there where the guard on the balcony outside saw what was happening inside, but if I'd taken that guy out first, maybe shot him or even dominated him and came back to the other one, it would have been super easy, so that was just my mistake. But, that's the last part of the mission, so thank you guys for watching. See you later.